You guys remember this? The motherboard I killed? Well, today we're gonna see if it's actually dead or if it was just playing possum. It's probably dead. EK Waterblock's Nucleus Series AIOs are a closed loop and maintenance free way to keep your CPU nice and cool for maximum performance. Compatible with the latest Intel and AMD CPUs, the Nucleus AIO comes in both the Lux Edition featuring ARGB lighting, as well as a dark version for a clean, light free aesthetic and an ultra clean look. Daisy chain fans allow for a super easy install, while the thicker cold plate provides an improved cooling experience versus the competitors. To see the full list of specs and sizes, follow the sponsored link in the description below. Couple things to talk about too. Uh, one of the major, major top comments over and over and over in the video where I showed how I killed this motherboard by having a backplate fall, not this particular one by the way, which I forgot to take off of here. <laughs> what is it with me and backplates? Anyway. Um, I'll get that off later. Something it, it fell behind here between the case and the board and it shorted something and then it turned on for a second, turned off and never came back on. Um, top, top comment was, I told you guys I'm gonna be doing a collaborative video with Northridge Fix. And a lot of you were like, this would be the perfect collaborative project. Bring it with you and find out what went wrong. So that's a great idea, but I wanna make sure it's still not working first. Otherwise I'm gonna be like, here's my board that doesn't work and he'll be like, Maybe it was user error, <laughs> you know, which she could probably say anyway. But moving on, I wanna test it. She gives me an, an opportunity to play around with my multimeter here to kind of test some of the traces and stuff and uh, kind of some interesting things that I can show you guys. So first and foremost, I'm just using an SFX um, 600 watt power supply. It's got the uh, jumper on here, which allows me to, when I turn on the power switch on the power supply, um, be able to provide power to the motherboard and stuff, you know, and make sure everything's working first. So first and foremost, the solid line with the dotted line, that is for DC or direct current. The wavy line is for alternating current or AC. This is a DC product. All the power supply is doing is taking the alternating current, converting it to direct current and downsampling it to, well not downsampling, but reducing it down to 12 volts uh, and then 5.5 volts and three volts, depending on where we need it. Essentially, it's just a transformer. It's transforming the power. So moving on, I wanna show you guys something. Initially, I thought something was wrong with this power supply, because look, watch the fan. That looks an awful lot like it turned on and turned off, right? But if I take my EPS power here, technically it doesn't matter which one you put where, it just might show negative. There, see it's showing negative 12 volt, because I have the positive on the negative and negative on the positive. But check that out, 12.12 volts. So the power supply works, it's just the fan isn't, it's not seeing a load, so the fan's not turning on. So that was the first thing I was like, did I break a power supply now? <laughs> um, no, I didn't. I wanna show you guys something else that I think is very important for people to realize here. All of your computers, your power supplies, your motherboards, everything have capacitors in them. And what capacitors are, they're essentially like little batteries that are in line on anything that needs power. It smooths the power out and it just provides a nice, uh, it pulls power direct from the capacitor and the capacitor is being charged by the input voltage. So the capacitor, think of that as just like a, a smoother, if you will. Capacitors also hold on to power even when you turn it off. So this is why I'm, I'm always really adamant that anytime I turn off my power supply on a system, I hold down the power button or I continue to try and force it to turn on to drain the capacitors. Cause we'll go ahead and demonstrate this for you right now. Check this out, 12 volts going to the CPU header right now. Watch what happens when I turn it off. Drops down to about a little, there is a half a volt. Now look at the capacitor drain rate. So now you're seeing the capacitors drain. They're actually draining because of the, um, the voltage meter right now. The voltage meter is actually what's causing that drain. Otherwise it drains even slower than that. Now maybe only a half a volt, but a half a volt where it doesn't need to be, it's a half a volt too much. So you can imagine now if I jumper 12 volts to something that's only supposed to be seeing one volt with a metal backplate, how that could be a problem. So what I'm gonna be able to do now is at least sort of start testing different areas in the motherboard to see where we're getting power and maybe where we're not getting power. That can at least sort of turn into a, um, an area of place to examine. I'm sure, I'm sure this is kind of what uh, Northridge Fix would do too. Like they have to determine where is the power making it to and not making it to and then you start investigating in line on that. It's probably gonna be capacitor, not capacitors, it could be capacitor that's borked on this. It's probably gonna end up being a voltage regulator somewhere or a MOSFET or something like that. I suspect where we're, because I, I'm looking for physical 
short on here, like a little burn mark or something. There's nothing. And the reason why I was expecting to see a burn mark of some sort, and I should be doing this with a magnifying glass or a uh, my microscope, but is I heard a when it turned off. So that's why I was fully expecting to see something on here blown up. Well, first and foremost, I've got to plug this all together. And before I even put RAM in there, I'm going to just plug this all in and see if I'm getting 12 volt to the areas that I'm supposed to be getting 12 volt, 12 volt, 12 volt too. I should have just gone with a longer power supply. You know that? And then, you know what? Screw it, I'll put RAM in there. This is the most basic of RAM that we've ever, I've ever seen. <clears throat> this is regular old Crucial DDR5 with uh, no heat spreaders or anything. They did not sponsor this, I just grabbed it. Just, it's so basic. I'm hoping, honestly, it doesn't just turn on right now. Cause if it does, then this whole video is just done. Actually, no, I said it. I said it in the video where it broke that I've had this happen before and leave it sitting on a shelf and go to it later and suddenly it works. Also too, I have a 12600K sitting in here and a Z690. Um, that shouldn't matter because one, they're backwards compatible. So the older CPU will work in a newer motherboard and I'm just having to complete the circuits, obviously. So here we go. Okay, nothing, which is exactly what I was hoping for. There's a, there's a capacitor right there. Two volts. Two volts going through that. That's the power, that's the sound card right there. Okay, so we've got two volts going through there. All right, well, do we at least have power going here? Probably shouldn't be any power going to these because these probably click on through a relay. Do you want me to hit the button while you're probing it? Oh, look at that. Yeah. So it tries. It tries to start. And then... Are you holding it? Nope. Oh, look at that. We got some power, residual power that went through there. Yeah, here, I'll, I'll do it again. Yeah. Wait, it's blinking. The power supply is flipping out. I'm turning it off. <laughs> so what you guys were hearing right there was actually the... Um, so it's basically an OCP or like an overcurrent protection. So the power supply was going on, off, on, off, which is... First of all, why would it suddenly start doing that when <laughs> all I did was probe the EPS? Okay, what is happening here? <laughs> what is the... CPU's cold, so I was like making sure it wasn't at least starting in some way, right? <laughs> oh my god, it's booting. Oh, it's hot. Okay, it's on. What the? <laughs> I didn't do any. Look, it's the equivalent of like, okay, I'm gonna look under the hood. You turn the key. Yeah. You turn the key and it starts. And I'm like, wait, let me turn the key. <laughs> roar, roar, roar. That wait. But the first time it was click, 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 yeah. click, 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 click. What was that about? Okay, it just restarted. So it probably trained the RAM. It just turned back on. So it's going exactly as I think it should be. Which means, are we gonna get an Im Yes, we got an image. What the actual fu- <laughs> I, You know what? I give up. I fucking quit. I quit. Okay, so right after I quit, the motherboard said, no, don't go, and it just turned off. And now, nothing. But, yeah, it's like. It's turning itself on and right back off. I'm gonna hold the cooler down a little bit. Maybe it's just the cooler wasn't transferring enough heat. Let's watch the temp. Okay, it says 26C. I think the cooler's fine. <laughs> what the hell, man? This is both good news and bad news. I. I said it in the video. You guys saw me trying to start it and it wouldn't start. 
And I said that sometimes you just set it aside and come back later and it works fine. And this pisses me off to no end because I don't have a why. I want to tell you guys, here's what happened. I wanted to take this to Northridge Fix and be like, let's fix it. Guess what? I already did by just holding the... That's supposed to turn it off too, wait. I just, it's great that it's working. I didn't even get to poke anything cool. Okay, let's retrace our steps. <clears throat> Plugged it all in, pushed power button, you guys saw nothing happen. I clicked it multiple times and nothing happened. I held it and nothing happened. I put it upside down, started poking stuff randomly, found two volts on the sound card. So we knew that the power was making it from the 24 pin to the sound card, at least. So we knew power was going that way. Then I started probing the backside of the EPS going, well, that's probably not gonna do anything because the EPS isn't gonna be seeing 12 volt and ground until the CPU is powered on. So we decided like, well, we're not gonna see anything. So we went, let's see if it even tries to start. Does it see voltage on the EPS? So Phil said, I'll push the button. So Phil has the button. I'm probing, Phil pushes the button, it turns on. It actually, it goes click, 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 click. You guys saw that. And I, the clicking on and off, on and off, on and off, I've never seen that behavior before. That's still abnormal. I almost wonder if somehow the capacitors were filling up and then that's, but that's, that still shouldn't have. Typically what, the reason why you, when you have a new build or you've unplugged your system for any length of time, the capacitors go do, like dormant, or not dormant, but drained. You plug in your system, you hit the power button, it turns on, it turns off. It waits about three seconds and then turns back on. In that off phase, it's powered down the CPU and stuff, but those capacitors are still being charged by the power supply. Then it turns back on when all the capacitors are uh, full. I don't know if this had something to do with the SFX. I highly doubt it. So it clicked on and on and off randomly, flipped it over, pushed the power button, nothing. I was starting to think maybe something was wrong in the sense that with it being upside down, something was getting pushed and working. Flipped it back over and literally went, I don't know what's happening. Click, 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 click. And then it started. Then I touched the CPU and it was hot. So that meant voltage was going to the CPU. Ran and got the cooler, stuck it on there, turned it on. We got the BIOS, like the, the error message on the BIOS, as you guys saw, it turned itself off, which doesn't normally happen. And that was with the cooler on it, by the way. And yes, the cooler is just resting on there, but believe it or not, this is fine. This is enough to allow the cooler to, the, the CPU to get enough cooling to just not thermal throttle off. That, that time it, it turned itself off when after I quit and came back, it wasn't turning on until I held the power button for like five seconds, then it turned on and we have been fine ever since. Look, look at the CPU temp right there with the cooler just sitting on it. I don't know what happened. I didn't even pull the CMOS battery out. Do you know what happened? Because I honestly don't. And this is like the third time this has happened to me. This is also why I was careful with this. Because sometimes, because if something breaks, it's fun to just like, wee, toss it up into the air and watch it shatter on the ground. I didn't do that with this one because I wanted to make sure it was bad. And it's not. Okay. This, this video, I fully intended to just start randomly poking crap on the motherboard to find where power was flowing and then not flowing. And then that gives you an indicator of somewhere between there and there is something wrong. The only thing that's wrong, is that it's right and working. Honestly, with the exception of clearing the CMOS, because because there's, there's one other theory, hear me out. When you have an OCP, it's not, there's not OCP just on the power supply. Sometimes the motherboard um, can have an OCP breaker on it as well. It's an auto reset breaker. And ten, what tends to happen is those auto reset breakers need to be removed from power for a certain length of time for them to discharge and go back. Then the breaker is kind of controlled by a capacitor as well, like a battery, right? So it'll reset itself after it has been discharged from whatever short is causing it to engage long enough. The thing was, when I tested this off, that's the bracket, <laughs> still working, right? Okay, when I tested this off of the bench, or out, out of the case, I took it out of the case, tested it on the table, it had been sitting there for well long enough to have reset that. Typically that reset happens in a couple of minutes. And you guys saw the initial start right now. This is days and days and days, like a week after you guys saw that video of me breaking it. So all I can think is that somehow the constant starting and plugging it in and 
Draining caps by hitting start was just enough to reset the OCP uh, breaker built in. It, I didn't, I don't believe this motherboard has one. That's the thing. Usually these lower end boards, yeah, $300 board, lower end, right? Usually these boards that are, don't cost 800 bucks don't have that kind of feature built into them. This one doesn't even have a QLED light on it. Like there's no Q code readout. It's just the stupid white, red, and orange LEDs that you have to then troubleshoot by the color. If I sound frustrated, it's because I needed more of a video than, hey guys, look, it's not broke. I think it's broke as my brain. At least you taught them about the caps. I taught them about the caps. You guys could see that they do retain some charge even when they're unplugged. But you saw the rate at which they were draining, right? Okay, I left the battery on, I know. You guys saw the rate at which they were draining, so there's no reason why a week later it should have had any residual charge on whatever OCP protection was in there. It's a completely different power supply too because that also is a removed from the equation. Someone out there knows what happened and I need to know. All right guys, thanks for watching. As always, we'll see you in the next one.